Hello, sir. Welcome to Love Heals Cancer and Zenonco.io. I'm Justina from Zenonco.io. This is our Cancer Healing Journey talk uh, where we invite speakers who have gone through cancer, uh, maybe as a patient, caregiver or survivor. These CHs are very close to our hearts because many patients tell us that when they listen to others' journey, it inspires them. It helps them to boost their confidence and give them hope that if others have been successfully beaten this disease, why can't they? So thank you so much, sir, for joining today's CHJ talk. So could you please introduce yourself and tell us how it all began? Thank you so much, Justina. And uh, let me begin by um, thanking Zen Onko uh, for giving me this opportunity. Um, my name is Anil Khanna and uh, I'm born and brought up in Delhi. Um, by a profession, I am uh, I belong to a finance uh, profession and uh, have worked with the organization for almost like 30 years. At the moment, I'm just working uh, on my own. And, uh, you know, the journey started with, uh, with my wife, um, Pooja, Pooja Khanna. And um, it, I think it's, it was sometime in 2017 or uh, late 2017 or 18 when it all started. Um, unfortunately, uh, we lost the battle, but um, here we are. When I look back, there are a few things which I will be more than happy to share. And even, you know, even, even a little bit of that sharing can help someone. I think uh, that not only serves my purpose, that equally serves Zenonko purpose, because that's why we are having this uh, session. Yeah, so I'm more than happy to share anything what you have to ask. Definitely, sir. I am pretty sure that each and every moment that you'll be sharing, uh, including your learnings, would help one or the other person. So, sir, uh, what could you please tell that what were the initial symptoms that your wife had and how that cancer got diagnosed? Uh, I, you know, the initial symptoms was, um, you know, as I said, late 2017 or, you know, when Pooja really felt um, the lump in her left breast, okay? And uh, I don't, think so that uh, I was told at that point of time because you know <laughs> she, she she like many other women and I don't know whether this is our culture whether this is how they are brought up they tend to keep things to themselves okay they feel you know ho jayega, okay uh, we will manage it uh, I think it was uh, it was February of 18 okay when uh, when we got our first mammogram done, okay, and uh, I very clearly remember that date because that date also coincides with the um, with the birthday of my only child, Astar. Okay, she turned fourteen on that day. Uh, we got the report. We were sitting in the lounge, and when we got the report, um, you know, mammogram. If you if you guys or your you know audience know there is a categorization which happens and that categorization is called as by rats uh, in a simple terms um, I think it's, it's just the best imaging categorization which actually tells you the load of the disease and um, we got the report and the categorization was five what does that mean that basically tells you that more than 95 percent you know there are cases of having a malignant tumor that's how it all started, you know. Um, that was our first, uh, that was a symptom and that was the first diagnosis that we got it done. All right, so, so was there any family history from her side of cancer? <laughs> yeah, there is. And that scares a shit out of me. Because uh, her mother, okay, is a cancer survivor. Okay, I think she was she was around fifty seven or fifty five or six something like that when she got diagnosed, and uh, we got to know. I actually not we I should say because Pooja would have known it. I got to know a bit later, and um, 
if I look back into my journey, I can tell you that uh, that would have been an initial cases for my mother-in-law, okay? Because today she is living a very healthy uh, life as a cancer survivor. And uh, and then, then it was my wife. Uh, now why it scares the shit out of me is because uh, if this, this hereditary tree is going on, I have my daughter. And uh, I don't know what what future holds for us, but uh, yes, her mother is a cancer survivor, and she's almost seventy years old now. Okay, so good to know that your mother-in-law she uh, actually survived and still leading a very healthy life. So, um, what was uh, your first reaction and your and her family members' first reaction? Because as you said that initially, uh, your wife didn't share it with you. Ah, uh, I think uh, if I if I recall, like anyone else, in Justina, uh, the first reaction was um, not only of a shock, but initially I think it didn't even sink in. Okay, then when we got the news, you know how can she get this? Um, you know, why it happening to her, and as I said, it coincided with the date, which was, which was a day of a celebration in our family. Um, she she put up a mask, and um, she gave me all the strength, and the strength through which you know basically we covered the entire journey, and that strength really helped me, and I decided to give her the best of the treatment, uh, but. Honestly, it didn't sink in initially, and uh, and when it comes to the family, I think specifically on her side, you know, her mother was uh, I will say her mother was completely devastated, you know, because uh, she has actually walked the path which her daughter is going through now, and. There is nothing more painful, okay? There is nothing more painful in life but to see your children suffer. And I could see that in her mother's eyes on that day very clearly. Uh, my side of the family was equally disturbed, okay? But you know, Pooja's character, the way, because I, don't, I haven't come across anyone more stronger than her in my family or even in my extended family, okay? Okay. Uh, she will smile. She will take everything on the face, um, you know, keeping her head high. And uh, her smile basically overshadowed everything, okay, and took away the burden. I think due to her strength, due to her character, you know, we were able to, you know, look at this monster and we could see what exactly we are fighting with. But she never gave up. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, so uh, what was the uh, treatments that she got, underwent? Oh, don't ask. <laughs> Today I laugh, uh, laugh at this question. Why so? Because, uh, you know, I think she went through everything that we can lay our hands on. Uh, as I said, holding her head high with all the strength, always smiling, irrespective of whatsoever was going inside, you know, trusting every single doctor, okay, to no doubt. And, but in the end, um, I will say everyone failed, okay. Um, I, we lost our loving, charismatic, and beautiful um, soul who not only suffered, but at the end, as I said, the battle was lost. And remind you that this was also the time, you know, when the COVID was at its peak because 2020, if I recall correctly, March, when the lockdowns getting started, not only nationally, but internationally, okay? And uh, so we couldn't travel anywhere, okay? Uh, forget about traveling within India, uh, sorry, traveling abroad. We couldn't even travel within India if I had to take her to somewhere else. So we were confined in our place for close to a year. 
With respect to when you say uh, what kind of a treatments, um, I think she actually went through a multi-faceted treatment that had different phases, okay? The very first phase started with Ayurveda, okay? I don't know whatever we did was right or wrong, but as I said, we actually we actually tried everything. So it started with um, Ayurveda, then uh, then there was uh, some time some time later, uh, you know, maybe a couple of months or so, there was also immunotherapy. Whatsoever was touted as one of the best because during that time I was reading through the journals and uh, there was a Nobel Prize which was given for the immunotherapy and we thought, okay, there's something which is popping up, but 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 the commercialization in this entire world is far, far, uh, far, far bitter than uh, than anything else. But um, after after going through this, she basically she basically go through the mainstream mainstream treatment which actually involved uh, the mastectomy of the left breast okay which is a very big thing and uh, we were assured that a mastectomy means you know you will be much much safer okay um, somehow i think uh, when you go to the doctors or the medical fraternity they they feel that the breast cancer is the is the one which can be cured easily okay Nevertheless, uh, I have my own opinion. Uh, so there was a mastectomy of the left breast and that was followed by the first generation chemotherapy. And after the chemo, there was a radiotherapy session. And once all of this was ended, she was basically put onto the hormone therapy, okay? And uh, within six, six months or six to eight months, that first generation hormone therapy failed, okay? Uh, after that, you know, she she basically went through the another phase, which now involved where uh, where since the cancer was more estrogen driven, um, she was advised to get her ovaries removed. So that was that was another uh, thing that was being done. And uh, after removing of the ovaries, she was put on to the second gen, second gen oral oral chemotherapy, which was again a hormone therapy. But things were really not controlling, and she used to get a lot of her pains because the cancer relapsed, you know, onto her spine, okay, and her backbone, and the that the hip lines, you know, bone area, and. Uh, she used to go through with a lot of a pain and uh, again, another radiotherapy was done. Post that, once that one equally failed, uh, she was put onto the chemo. And by this time, we also started, okay, uh, the integrative therapies approach. And I think um, I very briefly saw Zenonko also offers those like the vitamin C, the mistletoe, you know, the, the supplemental supports, you name it, uh, the SPOT therapies, uh, that was also being tried. Um, sometime we had our good moments. We thought that we have, we have conquered uh, or we were getting a bit of a success over this monster. But, uh, but you know, if it was taken, if the disease took, Two step backwards, it actually came with a very high force, you know, and it relapsed it again. And and then we were we were basically we were basically losing out on option, and she was again put onto the third generation chemo. Okay, all of this was actually breaking her immune system very much. Uh, we got to know about a gene therapy a gene therapy which was which was done only mainly in japan so we got hold of something like that but uh, finally on the life support therapies only and uh, and end of life so in a nutshell this is what she actually went through so you can point your finger on anything what was known to us what was being offered to us irrespective, even if you were not able to travel, 
if was if something was being happening in UK or for that matter something was happening in US, I used to be on calls with those guys and based upon their opinions. I as I said I used to I used to try and do those things and she will always take it with with you know with all the strength without even thinking through, you know, with only hope. I think it was a hope that we will be we will be able to fight this disease better. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, so uh, was there any comorbidities? Because as you said that there is like, um, she went through as many treatments as possible. So was there any comorbidities no, such as there, hypertension? There were because, but you know, the way a patient sees this word, which is called as comorbidities, versus in the medical language is different. I think because of the assault of so much of a treatment, okay, while we tried natural treatment also, whether that was Ayurveda, whether that was supplement therapy, vitamin C, mistletoe, and so on and so forth, okay, or the synthetics, which is basically chemotherapies, okay, uh, the body start deteriorating. And, uh, and I will say her immune system completely broke down. Now, all of that led to loss of energy. You know, the appetite was gone. There was hardening of nails, loss of hair, cachexia, which is basically called as a loss of a muscle. She became anemic, okay? Now, doctors may simply say that these are just the side effects and not comorbidities. But if you ask me, they are. They are the comorbidities. And all of these slowly and gradually as the disease really starting progressing led to, to a situation of liver failure. And once we were not able to, you know, um, save the liver, you know, that disease, uh, disease just took it, took everything away from us before all those doctors who were standing and seeing those things. So in medical paternity terms, calling that these are just mere side effects, um, I consider them as all comorbidities. Okay. So as a caregiver, um, you have seen so much. You have seen how your wife, you know, from being a very healthy person to, you know, going through so much and then the side effects. It would have been as a caregiver, it was pretty emotionally and mentally challenging. So how did you manage to, you know, cope up with uh, the situation throughout the cancer journey? I don't know. I never thought about it, Jasnya, because, uh, you know, how did I cope up? I think it was just Pooja's, uh, Pooja's strength of taking who was suffering through all of this was so high and... Uh, that I really wanted to give her the best and make sure that, you know, we do not lose that battle. Um, I never thought anything behind that, beyond that. And that kept me going and going and going, okay? So, um, exactly, you know, it was her strength that was making me move. Nothing, nothing beyond that. If it was not her, then I would have lost this battle, you know, much, much before. Much Good to know that uh, she, you know, managed to, you know, stay strong till the end and, you know, gave strength to strength to her caregivers. And because it's a very stressful and a very challenging battle, to be honest. So um, as as a caregiver, how did your lifestyle change? Because as you said, there would have been many online conferences with uh, medical experts from abroad and you know researching about better treatments and also did any lifestyle changes happen for you during the cancer uh, journey uh yeah let, before answering this let me also say to the last question i'm sorry for going back on that i think uh, one thing which also obviously helped and uh, and everyone goes through that is um, Exchanging your experiences with the people who are walking the same path, like, you know, the so-called cancer support group, we also came to 
uh, you know came across uh, you know whose mother wife sister you know because because my wife had a breast cancer so mainly i was dealing with you know that kind of our only so when you when you exchange those experiences sometimes you know few things open up those exchanging of uh, dialogue obviously help and and while i don't mean to demean anyone but you know anyone who is walking the path can actually understand and relate it much better than even your closest family member okay so that really really helped with respect to with respect to lifestyle changes you know as i said um, yes there were and we had to uh, we had to bring in all those changes uh, now it was uh, when i was i was very very frustrated initially when the cancer relapsed you know because um, like anyone else within 6 months of going through the treatment that was being told to us with a surety of more than 96% and suddenly something comes up i thought you know these guys really um, you know really do they really understand and the, and 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 the challenge is in india the biggest challenge is the population and even the the patients are too much for for the doctors to handle so i thought of started looking out i could not travel because of the covid and um, i will do 2 am 3 am calls for 1 1 hour just thinking through get those prescription from those guys or uh, late evening with the uk guys and share it with my doctors um so yes i did everything i did what i thought at that point of time was right uh was that right enough i don't know uh if i look back today but uh, but yes i brought in those lifestyle changes the lifestyle changes of uh, you know in our day to day living which means uh, what we are eating okay uh, how we should be uh, you know the changes around our um, you know if we have to be a bit more physically conscious okay if i say that and um, and on my side you know dealing with all those doctors or reading through it because being not being a medical student it was very difficult for me to understand those papers and you cannot become expert just by reading through the research papers on you know uh, pubmed or somewhere else or the facebook group there are plenty of facebook facebook groups which will tell you everything you will listen to every them your mind will get uh, more cluttered you will read more but in reality you do not get much out of it uh, so it's better to look for an expert and uh, i i that was my approach and that's what i used to do uh, so those were all that was driving me okay i can't hear you i think you're on mute yeah uh so the uh, i would say that it was not a learning but uh, you have learned a lot from that as you said that breast cancer cannot be healed you know if it's a breast cancer everyone thinks that it can be healed easily but you need a proper you should have a, you should be fortunate enough to you know get access to the proper medical support so uh, unfortunately that didn't happen and didn't help much that time for your wife so what would be your uh, advice or learnings that you had from this journey any three learnings look um, if i look back i don't know whether i will really call out this three or it may go beyond three or four first things first i think you really need to take care of your uh, mental health you know as a caregiver um or even that matter for the patient also but your mental health has to be taken care of uh it's more important for a caregiver because uh, for the patient it's they are already going through too much in through their body okay so please take care of that by joining the right uh, right groups or talking to the right people and restricting yourself of knowing it all or researching it all you can't okay you can't um i think the second thing which you should as my learning was like be patient honestly be patient okay 
if uh, you you should be prepared for a long haul okay and uh, you should have resources to fight this battle uh if you are dealing with what i have learned is if you are dealing with a with the disease which is an advanced stage okay i think what I learned was do not look for a cure. The more you look for a cure, the more things are going to go wrong quickly. Okay. Your quality and longevity, a sustainability is much better even if it's a stage three or a stage four. The moment we, we take a stage four and start looking for a cure, we, we, we try to make... Um, bit of a mistakes that I can tell you, okay. So other one, uh, sorry if I go beyond three, okay. I'm just thinking and um, whatever is coming to my mind, okay. Uh, do not, do not try hit and trial, okay. Um, therapies which are basically based on, uh, based on what you heard that has worked for someone uh, you know, someone through a Facebook group or through your discussions offline, uh, when you or you read through an article, you knew a little bit of a symptom, then you started researching or you started reading book like Jane McLean has got a book which is out there. Uh, and there are many, many more such resources. Just, you know, if you're picking up the book and you're thinking that you will try hit and trial everything, that is really not going to help. You better go and find out the expert in this area. Okay. Um, other thing is, uh, and specifically as a man, okay, I will say, when you are, when when your soulmate is hit by this. And even if you are not involved that much in your day-to-day, -day, you know, uh, home things, that's, that's how you'll put it. Now you are the one, you know, who should drive all the changes because you talked about uh, the lifestyle changes, okay? You know, do not leave it to your mother, sister, uh, or wife that they are the ones who are actually undergoing through this and they will, the, they will be bringing in the lifestyle changes. You own it. We are captain of that ship and bring in the changes. And uh, and, and lastly, um, I will say, uh, live every moment, okay? Live every moment with your loved one. Even whatsoever be the journey, you will still have, you know, some good moments. Cherish those. Because kya pata kal boya na so those are the things. I agree, uh, sir, uh, what you said, living every moment, though it's tough time, or though there, as you said, the little things that, you know, you still remember the cherished moment with your wife, that's, that's more, you know, valuable than looking for a cure and, you know, so, um, so what would be your one message to the cancer patients and caregivers who are suffering from, you know, or undergoing the treatment currently? First of all, you know, uh, maybe we all know this, but in a healthy body, okay, lives a healthy mind. Take care of your health, okay? The most important thing is take care of your health, not only of yourself, but also of your family. You know, you can keep on chasing your dreams, okay? But at the end of the day, the most important thing is, you know, because the life is just not about chasing your dreams. You know, life is much more beyond that loving your companionship, loving your family. We talk about, you know, the work-life balance, but look at, do you really do that? And specifically for the, this was more from a caregiver's perspective because we feel that we, our, the way we look at it is we are supporting our wives and they will run the show. 
and and if you are a patient by any chance uh you know make sure that you catch things initially it's very important you know that you get hold of things in a much much early stages and that can only happen when you take you know ownership of looking at your health and not putting it under the carpet ki chalo ho jayega koi fark nahi padta pehle kisi aur ke liye dekh lete hain i think uh, that is very important and if you are into this battle unfortunately um as i said for advanced stages my thought is do not go for a cure okay see you can go gradually and look for sustainability and and uh, rather than looking for an aggressive treatment for getting a cure yeah those were those were things i know it's more than a sentence <laughs> but but that's what i could think of so sir uh, it happened uh... like recently or you know a long time ago but still memories are always worth holding because it was your wife and you as you mentioned she was your soulmate and uh, how you know i still can bet that you know you will be still remembering her blooming smile and strength and all so to sum up this uh, beautiful flowers you know a blooming flowers story so how would you uh, you know put in a proper sentence and you know put it in a sentence and describe it uh as i said you know enjoy your companionship live the life fully okay even if it's a short one and uh, you know do your best without any guilt if you are struck by someone by something like this you know do not carry a guilt of saying that i could have done this or i would have done that you did your best and uh, and then just let it be okay the result the result or the outcome is is in not your in your hands not in your doctor hands also okay uh, just live that moment that's it beautiful sir so sir thank you so much uh, it was really inspiring listening to you because it takes a lot of courage to come up and share your journey as a caregiver because uh, as you said emotionally also the caregiver themselves you know go through a lot seeing their loved ones uh, you know uh, from uh, the face changing and then losing them it's it's a lot to take so thank you so much sir for sharing your experiences and uh, we wish you all the very best and all the happiness in the future thank, thank you, you so much jasna and thank you for giving me this opportunity i hope it helps anyone yes sir it definitely will be so take care sir thank you so much you too bye bye